What's going on guys? Bank Ligon here coming back at you with another video today. Back on Madden NFL 19 franchise mode featuring the New York Giants. And I'd like to address a comment off the bat. You guys know me. I love to dispute certain things. So uh, I got a comment from uh, Anthony Brown here. We'll just say his name. And, um, you know, says he likes the video, whatever. Uh, and I'm a better Madden player than I give myself credit for, uh, which is not true. I'm exactly where I am. I'm a good user defensively. And I'm terribly uh, terrible on offense. Is that redundant enough for you? Anyway, he basically says um, about like turning the sliders down. I, I hate to say this, but like the sliders are in a pretty good spot for competitive games. There can be tweaking here or there, um, but he says I shouldn't have all day to throw because my O line is just not good. Have you guys seen a, a game where I've had all day to throw? <laughs> Kyle Aletta, and we'll show season stats, by the way, pretty soon. Can we see how many times Kyle Aletta has been sacked over the course of this season? 46 times. And he has fumbled. I don't know if we can get a number of this. It might be in rushing. He's fumbled 12 times. So Kyle Aletta is averaging almost a fumble per game. And he has been sacked... 46 times so via math on that one he sacked basically three times per game and obviously we've had some games where we perform better than others some games where um we haven't performed that well obviously where we've been sacked five and six times per game so i don't agree with having all day to throw and also the offensive line isn't bad i don't know if you are caught up with that there anthony we have a left tackles and 86 overall an 85 overall left guard, an 80 overall center, and then right guard and right tackle. Granted, they're not where I want it to be. But they're pretty good right now, 77 and 78 overall. And we run the ball to the left side pretty much exclusively. Look at like any of the highlights you're going to see that I include in the games. We're running the ball to the left side to where we actually have playmakers. And we've got a pretty good offensive line on that left side from center to left tackle. Uh, so I wanted to address that. So Because I know a lot of you probably have similar opinions to that about the sliders. Also, um... He has an issue with CPU pass blocking because the Giants are averaging six sacks a game because our defensive line isn't good, I guess. This is not the New York Giants in real life that suck. This is the second year, at the end of the second year, New York Giants that have a very good defensive line. 92 overall right end, 94 defensive tackle one, 87 defensive tackle two, 87 overall left end. Roman Pugh at right end who now is up to superstar development, has 96 power moves. Olivier Vernon on the left side has 89 power moves. And granted, Damon Harrison's more of a uh, run stuffer than a pass rusher. He's got 85 power moves. And Dalvin Tomlinson's probably going to be in a similar area with 81 power moves. And we got Lorenzo Carter, who I'm sure is at like 83 or 84 for power moves. 84 power moves. BJ Goodsman's in blitzing. Ellis offered blitzes. When we send blitzes, we should get pressure, all right? So the fact that, you know, we're getting pressure on the quarterback finally isn't turn down the sliders to make it way difficult. We've got a really good defensive line. If we go to sacks here in the league, um, we are not even in the top five. We're close. We're at number six here with 48 sacks. But we've got a phenomenal defensive line. It's, it's a really good defensive line. And other teams are outpacing us for sacks. Chargers are good. Texans are good. Saints are good. Steelers are okay. They have 51. The Steelers, like, their defensive line is not better than ours. So I have no problem with finally getting pressure and, and getting sacks because if you look at the guys on the uh, Steelers who have sacks, TJ Watt, all right, he's pretty good. He's probably developed pretty well. He's up to a 92 overall. The same overall as Roman Pugh. doesn't have close to 16. Bud Dupree, Alvin Dupree, he's an 80 overall. Stefan Tuitt is probably like 83, 84. He's up to a 91. No shit. All right. He has only, uh, I guess, 93 power moves. Pretty good. Vince Williams, he's a middle linebacker. Cameron Hayward's pretty good. Javon Hargrave, probably will have like 83 finesse moves, something like that. Uh, 82 finesse moves, that's pretty close. We've got a better defensive line, and we're not even getting the pressure that they're getting. It's a significantly better line, too. Um, and he ends with, you're 12 and 12 with a very bad Giants team. This team very bad to anybody? This team's not very bad. What's very bad about this team? We're at 86 overall. Come on, man. Give me, give me a break. This is a pretty good team. Let me perform. 
I will show the uh, season stats after that super long intro. And um, I unfortunately will not be able to show where it ranks in the entire league, but you guys will pretty much be able to do the math on that. Kyle, a lot of 4,000 passing yards, pretty damn good. 28 interceptions is uh, a little low for where I'd want it to be. 20 interceptions is obviously way too high, but he's not amazing just yet. And neither am I. So that'll happen. Saquon Barkley, this is where we could have a problem with run blocking. So I turned it down a little bit, even though we do have some good run blockers. And Saquon's up to a 98 overall. I don't know if you knew that. 2,142 rushing yards. 18 touchdowns. It's a phenomenal season. Uh, for those who don't know, that breaks the record for rushing yards ever in a season. I get that. That's pretty high. Uh, previously, it was uh, Eric Dickerson with the Rams. Uh, I want season here. So, rushing yards in season is now Saquon Barkley. He has, uh, you know, roughly 40 more yards than Eric Dickerson. So, I get it. He had the best season, arguably, for any running back ever. I get that. He's a very good overall, and I, I don't know. Run blocking was lowered a little bit to make that a little bit less ridiculous, and I, I doubt we're going to have that success again. Uh, to that degree, at least. But he breaks off these 70-yard runs occasionally after being stuffed in the backfield, and it just skyrockets his total. I mean, he's very, very good. So, yeah, I get it. That's a very high percentage of, uh, you know, rushing yards in a season ever. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. As far as other running backs who got involved, pretty much no one. Saquon Barkley had 377 carries. So I'm going to compare that to Eric Dickerson's Great season, and we'll see how Saquon stacks up. So Eric Dickerson did it in 1984, 2,105 yards, pro football reference says. I think it's 2,100. Yeah, I mean, I'll take their word for it, uh, which is averaging 5.6 per carry, and he had 379 attempts. Saquon had 377 attempts, averaging 5.7, so 0.1 more yards per carry. I don't really have a major issue with that. Receiving, Odell had a fantastic season, about 1,200 yards. 13 touchdowns. Sterling Shepard, almost 1,000 yards, 6 touchdowns. Howard Russell had a pretty good rookie season. Just didn't find the end zone all that much. 747 yards, 3 touchdowns. And then Evan Ingram, about 600 yards and 4 touchdowns. Good season for him. DeMar Jacobs wasn't super involved. And then Rhett Ellison also, obviously not super involved. As far as blocking goes, pancakes don't really have it. They don't even show it anymore. And as far as sacks goes, uh, Eric Faison allowed 11 which, in my opinion, is too much for actually playing the games. We, we were sacked a lot, but he's just not good enough, so we may look to replace him in the offseason. Defensively, B.J. Goodson led our team in tackles with 123, 10 for loss, 5 sacks, 8 picks. Tremendous defensive season. We'll see how he fits in the team going forward. A lot of that is because I was using it. I'm not going to slight him, but it was basically me. Olivier Vernon led our team in tackles for loss, 14 Lorenz Carter at 13. He had a fantastic season as well with four sacks, five picks. Eight sacks for Damon Harrison, 11 for Roman Pugh, the rookie out of UCLA, five for B.J. Goodson. And the rest of the team wasn't super involved with getting after the QB, you know, one here and there. Interceptions, we have eight for B.J. Goodson, obviously five for Lorenzo Carter, five for Jack Rabbit, Janoris Jenkins, four for Landon Collins, only three for the rookie Morris Dubose out of Nebraska. I'd like to see that total go up, especially considering how how good he is now. He's up to a 90 overall. And, uh, I mean, his ratings are pretty good. We've got that zone coverage up to an 87 overall with confidence. And then, you know, a couple of picks here or there for some players. And that's pretty much it for defense. We will show catches allowed because that's a little bit interesting. Uh, no one allowed 10, but mostly linebackers. And then force fumbles. We don't really get any. Well, I mean, like, obviously we have a few here. But no player has more than one, which is interesting. And we only recovered two. As far as defensive touchdowns, we have four overall Lorenzo Carter, Landon Collins, B.J. Goodson, and Morris Dubose. So defensively, we were pretty solid. I will actually show special teams as well, where we have kicking. Aldrich Gross, 23 for 26. Eh, it's not bad. So I think the kicking arc is probably for the best because uh, they give you realistic numbers because, you know, not every kicker is going to make every field goal, obviously. And then Riley Dixon, I mean, we punted 50 times, only 11 inside the 20. Hopefully we punt less and uh, get in the end zone more. But we were second in the NFL in offense and fourth in defense. So this team did perform pretty well. So I am going to tweak the sliders a little bit, just a little bit. I'm going to go run blocking 72. We're going to try that out. It was at 80. And 80 just wasn't run blocking. I think in the title update for Madden, 
they you know mess around with some stuff, especially for blocking on all Madden, which is what we're playing on. So I am going to turn that down. I don't think we need 80 anymore, and 75 feels a little bit too high, so we're going to try out 72. Uh, and then for defense, I think most of the stuff in here is pretty good. I like where it is. Pass coverage could go up, but we're going to leave it. And then CPU skill, we're going to turn pass blocking up to a 17. And then run blocking at 80, I'm fine with. Fumbles for the CPU. We're going to turn that up to a 55. And then I think the rest of their stats are okay. And uh, that's where everything else is. If you guys are curious, we show the sliders every so often. And someone also asked about XP sliders. They've been the same. I did a video on every XP slider that I use, but these are pretty much the ones that I use stock. So if you guys want to go ahead and plug those in, if you'd, if you'd like, you're more than welcome to. But finally, we focus in on the Atlanta Falcons. In the divisional round of the playoffs, we are minus two overall. Hopefully, we can come out here and get the win advanced to the NFC Conference Championship. Falcons, Giants. The Falcons, by the way, have never won a Super Bowl, as I'm sure Falcons fans will love to be reminded of. But we'll remember that the Falcons haven't been along, uh, around as long as a lot of other teams in the NFL. So we're going to cut them some slack, but both teams are going to take the field here at MetLife Stadium for what will be a lot of players' first playoff game. Obviously, we did not make the playoffs last year if you watch Giants franchise, which is a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. All right, Aldrich Rosas will kick. I'm not sure I love that every captain has a star on them in-game. I, I think it should be the highest overall players on the field have stars because I mean let's just say you wanted to which you could you could make the lowest overall players on your team captains and then you could have like 65 overalls in the field with stars so I'm not a gigantic fan of that personally and Roman Pugh just jumped off sides but they didn't call it and he gets after the quarterback perhaps a little bit of a boost there Matt Ryan good to go down on the first play that like what his 96 power move should be a problem today for Jake Matthews. Oh, man. That's a good pass. Austin Hooper gets the first down. Matty Ice hits him for 18. We can't have third and long situations where we allow a first down like that. That's just very frustrating to a defense. Oh, it's a play action. That was a great play action as well. Somebody's got to get over to that. Janoris Jenkins on Julio Jones is going to be a very tough matchup today. I think what we're going to do is put Morris Dubose on him and say, all right, rookie, step up. They do like to dial up pressure, so we're going to keep doing that. It's a run. Now it is. And we're there with Lorenzo Carter, and it's a broken tackle. I lose the tackle battle. Devontae Freeman still going inside the five. Oh, man, we are looking bad right now. Silly mistakes like uh, arm tackles and not being able to wrap up. Of course, that one was on me, but uh, we got to not have that happen. Throw the ball at me. What the? Come on, man. I'm right there. He throws the ball anyway, and he gets a speed burst. Austin Hooper with a touchdown, and we are going to go down here early. The Falcons looked just dominant is the only thing you could say. The Falcons looked so good on that opening drive. We had a couple plays. We got after the quarterback early, but then didn't really get pressure for the rest of the drive. And the Falcons were like a well-oiled machine converting when they needed to, and they always seemed to be able to create the big play. There it is. Evan Ingram. Outrun him. I'll take the 14-yard pickup. Look to be checking down a lot today. Trying to avoid Deion Jones, if I'm being honest. Because he is a very athletic linebacker. We played the Falcons early in season number one. And Deion Jones was an animal. But we're going to go right back. What? Looking for Evan Ingram over the top or Odell underneath, depending on... Uh, what routes played there and I can't quite get it off to him Kyle Aletta goes down again Grady Jarrett delivers the heat and uh, this is off to a really really bad start here at home get after it thank you Lorenzo Carter someone also said that uh, my usury is cheesing the CPU if you see what the CPU does to me every single game me just playing a linebacker and making good reads and covering my zone <laughs> It's not cheese. It's just being decent at the game. And that's going to be a deep shot. Morris Dubose goes up and gets it. The rookie covering Julio Jones shows off the ball skills and makes an incredible play on the ball. These are the type of plays we need. 
Morris DuBose. What a play. First and 10. Oh, come on. Block him, man. Isaiah Oliver comes in and makes the sack. I mean, I know they sent a nice stun in there, but, like, check this out. What is the center Logan Robeson doing? Block and release, hands off to Hilton, the right guard, and he just doesn't ever come over to cover the cornerback blitz. Couldn't diagnose and get the ball off quickly enough. We need players to make plays, and that is... It's not doing it. You can't, well, you can't have the opportunity to make plays if the offensive line is just letting people free. Just right into the quarterback. Third and 20. This is going to be a really tough ask. We might just play this as a punt of sorts and just throw the ball up. But we have a receiver. That's Howard Russell. The rookie out of USC coming down with the catch for a huge first down to beat the cover too. Our offensive line is getting brutalized right now. That's going to have to change if we're going to win this game. It is second and eight. And we are going to the outside. Sterling Shepard inside the 10. That's a lot of guys in the box. We're going to check out of this. And maybe just go over the middle. I'm going to have Red Ellison on an out. And maybe Sterling Shepard following on an underneath drag. And we're going to go quick to Odell Beckham Jr. He's going to spike the ball. An unusual celebration from Odell. But I'll take it as we are looking to tie up the game here in East Rutherford, New Jersey in this divisional playoff matchup. Wind is heavily against us, but it is not going to stop the kick from going straight down the middle. 7-7 at the end of the first quarter. So the Morris DuBose interception set up a very influential score, but that is actually the end of the first quarter as we look to shut down the Falcons, get the football back, and score. It's uh, pretty much our game plan. Get points on the board and don't allow any points. Could win the game if we do that well. What is that? What is that? Flats open. Devontae Freeman has to dive to catch it, though. Falls down short of the first down marker. And Matt Bosher and the Atlanta Falcons will punt the football back. It is a very short punt. Get out of there. Get out of there. Don't touch it. Goodness gracious. There's got to be a fire button on, a, on the control on a punt. If you can just press a button and the, everyone gets away from the football. You guys are familiar with uh, special teams and like fire, 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 get out of there. Um, that'd be nice because that could have been a muffed punt, fumble, whatever. It would have been bad. And we have a deep shot. Odell Beckham Jr. burns the cornerback. Catches the ball inside the 20. We're back in the red zone. Where are you, Desmond Trufant? We got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Come on, man. Deion Jones on the middle linebacker blitz with like 130 speed just shoots right through the gap and we never had a shot. We're gonna roll out. That's a spot in the zone. Evan Ingram drags the feet, gets the completion. We're now inside the 10, first and goal from the seven. I know we haven't shown a lot of Saquon Barkley runs. I'll be sure to show this one. He has five attempts already. I say already, I mean it is already the second quarter Six rushes now for 23 yards. He's been decent, just nothing extremely noteworthy. But I think we might go right back to Saquon Barkley on third and goal from the one. And the outside runs have just been the most effective over the course of the season. It is third and goal. And Saquon Barkley easily gets into the end zone. And we are going to take the lead. Likely will be 14 to seven after the extra point. And uh, after a really, really bad first series for us offensively and defensively against the Falcons. We've really turned this around, and that spark plug has been Morris DuBose. He's been shutting down Julio Jones since we moved him onto him over a guy like Janoris Jenkins, and he was the spark plug. That interception, I think, has really, really turned the tides here. We're going to get the football back after the incompletion, and aside from the first sack of the game, get out of there, get out, get out, get out! Don't return that! Come on! It's so just unresponsive when I'm switching on and trying to get him out of the way. But uh, we got a sack in the first play of the game. And we haven't got even a lick of pressure since. So we have to step up. The defense, and they've only allowed seven points, but it's not good enough for me. I'm going to need way better. Go, Saquon. Hit the hole. Let's go. Bowl him over. Maybe not the most effective move there. A juke maybe would have been a little bit better. But it is a pretty big gain. Saquon averaging five and a half on the ground. 
and we're just gonna look to move our offense through arguably our best player he actually is the highest overall he has surpassed Odell Beckham Jr. with confidence as the highest overall in this team as we're gonna spin back hopefully around Deion Jones but he does end up making the tackle we have a big body in Evan Engram. He's a, well, he is only 6'3", but in relation to a, a lot of other tight ends, it's pretty good. We're going to give him the ball. Go up and get it with the high point pass and the touchdown. Evan Ingram finds the end zone, and we are now looking at 21-7 New York Giants. And that extra point is blocked. It is going to be 20-7. Uh, That's shut down. That's just no way. A lot of times I'll bait uh, the quarterback and I'll bail out on the run sometimes too. And that's how often I get uh, screwed up in coverage. But when we just sell out on the run and make the play, I mean, there's nothing better than a uh, three-yard loss just consistently. And that is not going to be one of them. Obi Melifon, we got to make the open field tackle. We bring down Devontae Freeman after a huge gain. He's averaging six per carry that can't happen oh uh, try to shut that down great open field tackle in the backfield by Lorenzo Carter and it will be third and nine and as I've said Matt Ryan has been pretty much perfect today besides the interception I'm not sure if he has another incompletion I know he has one incompletion but and I guess the interception but there's only been one ball that's hit the ground and um, that's not gonna be one of them how do you catch that it's a great play but uh, I was hoping we'd see Matt Ryan's stat line there. He has been, yeah, 8 for 10 passing, so an interception and one incompletion uh, other than that. We've got to stop him, man. They're just not really taking the shots. It doesn't matter. User pick, easy reads. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I don't know any other children's books. And does that even count? I don't know. But that's a great easy read user pick, and we're taking the football back. Third and 13. We're going to go right over the middle. Howard Russell almost makes one miss. Unfortunately, that is Deion Jones. He's not going to miss that tackle. And we will punt the football back on fourth and seven. And we got the win with us. So we can certainly pin them in a good spot as long as this one's not too bad of a punt. It's going to be a little bit too much. Damn, I tried to take some off that, but the wind just, just really took hold of that. Oh, it's play action. Get off him. That's another user pick. Easy reads. The giving tree. I run out of these. Lorenzo Carter being 6'5, 6'6, six, 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 something in that neighborhood. Absolutely helped there. That that's a little cheesy. He jumped up ridiculously high to make that play, but I'm not complaining. Third and ten. It's gonna be a, a pretty deep pass here. And that's exactly what we need. Howard Russell hauls it in on the four-yard line. We're gonna call our second to last time out of the half. First and goal from the four. I think we are going to stay. I was going to say we're going to pass. That looks like we can run on that pretty easily. First and goal. Come on. Saquon Barkley up the middle. Touchdown. This was a fantastic way to end the half. Saquon's second rushing touchdown of the half and of the game, of course. And we're going to be looking at probably 20, 28 to 7 if we can convert the two-point uh, try. We're going to be doing it from the two. Seven seconds. The half is pretty much over. Just can we get the ball to one of our playmakers? I might even run this. I think we're going to with Saquon Barkley. He's just too big of a playmaker. And we got it. Easy. 28-7. to seven. New York Giants at the half. And I will likely see you guys for the start of the third quarter. All right. In a true fashion, I have <laughs> went away for about an hour. Because I wanted to experience a real halftime, you know? Nice. Having dinner. And uh, there are always weirdos who are curious what I had. And uh, I had um, a, a type of pasta and mussels. Because I have a lack of mussels in real life. And uh, so I, I decided to eat them. So maybe I'll get stronger. As we allow a uh, sack fumble return touchdown for our first turnover of the game, and we are now only leading by two scores, two touchdowns. It's great. All right, let's uh, 
let's run the ball a lot before we call play action again. I wasn't really thinking. I was talking. To, I was making a bad joke about uh, food, which I don't know what this is that that's happening. I I gotta stop talking and just play the game and talk when I need to. Would be better. Third and three. We're gonna run the ball to the left side. I need a big buck from somebody. Deion Jones just read it very, very well. Red Ellison couldn't block because uh, Deion Jones came in essentially unblocked. And, of course, we illustrated that he was going to be one of the really, really influential players that we'd have to look out for in this game. And uh, so far, he's played very, very well. And that, I believe, is offsides. I'm not sure. I don't have aggressive pass rush on or anything. I should turn it on, honestly. But Roman Pugh has jumped off twice now. This is the first one that was actually called. This is encroachment or neutral zone infraction um, over, you know, and offsides. It's essentially the same thing. I don't know. Is he undisciplined all of a sudden? Like, what's going on? Let's play action. Get back. Ellis offered. Great way to knock the ball out of the hands of the tight end. Huge stop on second and two. That would be a huge third down stop, but we've got that now. Might have to use your Lorenzo Carter. That is a super, super fun user because of how tall and how fast he is. But that's going to be even better. BJ Goodson with the user pick. Easy reads. Green eggs and ham. We're bringing it back. Let's go, baby. Third and 13. Odell's getting doubled, which means that someone else should be opened and available to make a play. It's going to be Evan Ingram threading the needle through the defense. Odell getting doubled. Interesting. On the run! That's intercepted! Robert Alford with an unbelievable interception. I gotta go to the replay because I don't even know what just happened. It all happened so fast. So, I'll break down what I was thinking here. I thought, maybe I'll run up the middle with Kyle Loretta. I'm like, ah, that's gonna close up. So we roll out to the right. I'm thinking, I can probably run for this. But I see Howard Russell open. He's running open. I throw the ball right here as he's getting open. And he's open. Uh, the ball is thrown clearly behind Howard Russell, and that's the big problem about why this is picked off. The reaction time from Robert Alford is absolutely unreal. Uh, I don't know how that happened. That's That's incredible. But if that ball is over here, I mean, he's, he still probably picks it off because he glitched to the ball. But I don't know. That's that's incredible that that isn't a touchdown. And we have our uh, second turnover in a row, really, I think. That's not good. That is not good. Devontae Freeman's been very good today. Yeah, so saying that the CPU pass blocking slider's way too low, we have one sack the entire game, and it's the third quarter. I don't think we're getting in the backfield every play. And uh, the rushing has been hard to contain, though. Someone make a play on the ball. Thank you, BJ Goodson. I switched on there, and it gave me Landon Collins, which is a little bit confusing because he was obviously not closest to the ball. Probably saves the CPU and interception, if I'm being honest. There's a screen. Oh, my God. He played that very, very well. Robert Alford stepped up in a... I don't know how he would have been there. I think he should have been in a deep zone and just didn't drop back. Uh, unfortunate. I'm trying to play it conservatively to just, you know, kill the clock. But we're only up by two touchdowns right now, and we don't have the ball. So, I don't know. We're just in such a tough spot in the field there. I didn't want to risk an interception or, or uh, run the ball into uh, another wall or something. So, we tried something. Played it conservatively. Try to get some space for our punter, and I don't know. Play action, get back over the middle, sack fumble. Damon Harrison got to the quarterback. Devontae Freeman recovers before Roman Pugh gets a hand on him. And finally, we get pressure on the QB. I think it's going to count as a sack fumble. It should. Second and 22, though. Lorenzo Carter, big Lorenzo Carter in the middle of the field here. And that is going to be a lob ball. 
and nearly intercepted by Landon Collins. I have play ball on for defense. Why are you going for the knockdown there? That's got to be a pick, man. What are you doing on third and 22 that you throw the ball three yards before punting? You're down by two touchdowns. What are these punts, man? I'm spamming triangle. Thank you. He didn't, he didn't wave. Saquon Barkley has 58 yards today. And this is after a number of just gigantic performances in the past. We've been really struggling to get it going here. But he's going to bounce off of one there. And if he could have made another miss, that could have been gigantic. But uh, unfortunately not. Taking off Vanilla Vic. We're just going to slide before the first down marker, but that is a huge gain from White Lightning, Kyle Aletta. Fourth and two. We're going to try a 45 yarder. Move it slightly over to the left. And I've, I've shanked it. Right down the middle. <laughs> and the sack. The Roman soldier with his second of the game. In the first and then the fourth. I'll take it. Can't get it over. Lorenzo Carter. Another user pick. The cat in the hat. Lorenzo Carter's third interception on the game. That height is lethal. You can't lob it over me anymore. That is going to be the ball game. We're going to walk out of here with the win over the Atlanta Falcons. And, um, yeah, it's pretty good win. We played well. Lorenzo Carter was an absolute beast. So that is going to be it for the episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. When we get back, we're going to have some upgrade points. And we're also going to be taking on a team in the conference championship. That team will be the 13-3 and Los Angeles Rams live from MetLife Stadium. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.